Prasad, you have a special moment. I've always wanted to ask people who've done this for a long time, what is a special moment that you cover? Oh, covering every single Maryland's, uh, every single one of Maryland's names new to the 2002 National oh, Championship. Okay. It just so happened that Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and I were assigned to every single one of the Terps' names. And what was really cool is that, you know, I, I had gotten to know Gary Williams when he first came in when I was a sophomore. So we went back a long way, and the great thing about that was the access that I had, the opportunity. Coach let me sit in on a film session, I was at meetings, it was a practice, I talked to him every day. And so the level of insight that I had while the team was going through the tournament and making history was really special. Mm -hmm. uh, as we wrap up Women's History Month, yes, sir? Um, could you talk about the strides that women have made, um, not only in the game, but in broadcasting, and now kind of in a new field that you're doing, the production and things of that nature, could you talk about the importance and, and how the whole gender has grown sure. in, in the industry? The funny thing about Title IX that so many people don't realize is that there is not a single reference in Title IX's language about sports, athletics, anything like that. It just so happens that arguably the largest impact that Title IX has had in the sports space. And what we've seen now that we're five decades into Title IX is the more girls and young women who have the opportunity to play sports, the more women will want to continue to stay in sports as a career, which will create more opportunities to rise up those corporate ladders and work in leadership positions. So while we tend to focus on the impact of girls and young women being on the field of play, the ripple effect is what we have the ability to do in the industry as we grow up and the numbers continue to increase. Mm -hmm. Last question for you. Uh, one bit of advice that you would give to, uh, because you know it's the changing face of communications. It's definitely not when we got in. Now these kids have Google <laughs> and all kinds of YouTube channels. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> but but with the perils of that is social media and things of that nature. One bit of advice, you know, the core ex core ethics of journalism that we all know. One personal piece of advice that you can give to any journalist coming up now? Well, I think as journalists, we are conditioned to know the importance of fact findings, yes. and Inaccuracy. one source is not enough. And be very careful, because there is this propensity to want to be the first, <laughs> but the most important thing is not to be the first, it's to be right. The other thing I will say is, there's a tremendous opportunity for young people now to start building their brand yeah. and making an indelible impression before they even get their degree. Get on social for all of the right reasons, start your YouTube channel, share your opinion, build your brand, cultivate relationships, reach out, do the internships, do everything you can to create an indelible impression so you become memorable and position yourself for great things once it's time to go out and get a job. The one and only, <laughs> Bonnie Bernstein. <laughs>